Good morning. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for this uh, invitation. It's a pleasure to address uh, 18th annual European Financial Services uh, uh, Conference. So uh, let me uh, start uh, by congratulating you on the title of today's uh, conference, Embracing Change in a Time of Uncertainty. It's a good uh, description of circumstances in which we find ourselves. Uh, I say it because uh, uh, for some time now, it's not business as usual for European uh, project. That was uh, so even before coronavirus has hit us with a full force. Uh, now we only not uh, not not only we face acute health uh, challenge, we are also facing a severe disruption to the band, labor supply and supply chains across the world. As a result, global economy is heading into a recession, and so is the EU, with uh, every EU member state uh, affected. Uh, throughout the crisis, our priority has been to tackle the public health emergency, uh, protect people's jobs and incomes, and keep businesses afloat. Uh, to that end, among other things, we uh, agreed three safety nets worth 540 billion euros to support workers, businesses, and countries. Uh, then the Commission presented a banking package to be, uh, give banks the right resources and flexibility to channel funds to the businesses and households. Uh, just yesterday, uh, this banking package was endorsed by EU governments uh, following the European Parliament's endorsement last week. So it's all a good news for keeping financing flowing to those uh, who need it most. Uh, this uh, complements the welcome uh, efforts already made by the financial sector to provide liquidity, including moratorium payments and credit obligations. Uh, getting these relief uh, measures to work in the best possible way is of high importance. So we brought the financial sector, consumers and business representatives together to discuss these measures. The aim is to make sure that they are implemented on the ground and to identify best practices in selected areas that can be emulated across the EU. So uh, the, these uh, discussions will continue in the same format next uh, Mondays. Uh, as uh, governments ease their lockdowns, Europe is moving into a recovery phase. But our economies will need more support to restart. This is why European Commission proposed a recovery plan, Next Generation EU, which is worth 750 billion euros. Uh, combined with the EU's uh, next uh, multi-annual budget of 1.1 trillion euros, uh, it will give us overall financing uh, uh, firepower of 1.85 trillion euros. Uh, the bulk of the uh, Europe's recovery fund money will uh, be uh, supporting EU countries in their reforms and investments, also in line with the goals of the green and digital transitions. Uh, Albert Einstein famously said, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. <clears throat> Uh, this is one such uh, opportunity <clears throat> to make Europe's economies more sustainable, digital and resilient and uh, as inclusive as possible. Uh, because uh, as the wars of the coronavirus has uh, passed, uh, people uh, still need jobs and incomes as we enter economic recovery phase. That recovery should not leave anyone behind. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will now say a few words on the green transition. The challenge of climate change has not gone away with the pandemic. Uh, while, the, uh, while we aim to uh, generate uh, widespread economic growth with the recovery, uh, this growth should be uh, green wherever possible. Uh, the Commission is on track on its uh, uh, plan to uh, raise the EU's 2030 climate uh, targets and uh, go for deeper cuts in green, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, as we uh, uh, heighten our ambition to cut emissions, this will require even more investment. 
and in any case, our long, uh, longer term goal of turning Europe climate neutral by 2050 stays. Uh, however, the cost of fighting the virus is also emptying public uh, coffers. Uh, due to its economic impact, many countries will have more debt and less fiscal space. Uh, it is clear that uh, public money will not be enough to meet our investment needs. Uh, only the private sector can provide the sheer scale uh, to meet our green ambition. Uh, this is why we devised a Green Deal investment plan to generate at least 1 trillion euros over the next decade. Uh, as uh, part of this, I plan to present a renewed sustainable finance strategy this year. The public consultation will uh, gather views and, uh, and ideas, and it's still open until 15th of uh, July. Uh, in the meantime, another public consultation has uh, ended on uh, changes on the EU's non-financial reporting rules. Uh, disclosure of this uh, information, climate and uh, environmental data, for example, uh, forms the basis for investors' decisions on uh, sustainable investment. Uh, it must improve if we are uh, to encourage uh, the uptake of sustainable finance, it is also in line with global initiatives such as task force of climate related financial disclosures. Uh, most people who responded to our public consultation said that the non-financial information reported by companies was uh, uh, insufficient and on many levels. Uh, among the respondents, most reporting companies said the demands uh, made to them to provide non-financial information uh, poses a significant problem uh, for example, they were unsure about what kind of information to report. Uh, we uh, also uh, observed strong support for imposing a requirement on companies to use a common standard for reporting non-financial information and for simplified and voluntary standard for small and medium-sized companies. Uh, finally, a large uh, uh, majority of respondents uh, supported the use of EU's new classification system or taxonomy as a way to define an environmental disclosures required by non-financial reporting rules. Uh, earlier this week, the taxonomy regulation was uh, published on EU's official journal and it will enter into force on 12th of July. Uh, it will be a priority to then to push uh, forward actually with the uh, implementation of this system, actual taxonomies uh, this year and next. Uh, taxonomy will be the basis for uh, eco labels uh, on retail financial products as well as green uh, mortgages. Uh, both will help to guide investors towards reorienting capital flows towards sustainable investment. Uh, and uh, the basis for EU green uh, bond, and, uh, bond standards too, of course, uh, uh, there will be, uh, there we just opened additional uh, public consultation. So we want to find uh, out how EU and its countries can support and incentivize development of large scale, uh, uh, high quality green bond market. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, if the private uh, sector is to step in and generate uh, large amounts of money for uh, meeting our green ambitions, we need the support of deep, fully functioning, uh, for functioning and integrated capital markets. Uh, this brings me to the Capital Markets Union. Uh, uh, taking this uh, flagship project to the next level will be fundamental also for our economic recovery. Uh, companies should be uh, able to assess diversified uh, alternative sources of uh, market-based financing anywhere in the EU. This is especially true for smaller operations. There are, uh, these are also reasons why Capital Markets Union becomes ever more relevant. Uh, two weeks ago, a high-level forum on the Capital Markets Union presented its final report. It contained recommendations on how best to move ahead with capital markets in Europe. We welcome all feedback on the report uh, uh, and um, uh, we will gather this uh, feedback uh, until the end of this month. The CMU will play a key part in the economic recovery and we are committed to presenting CMU action plan in the early autumn. 
but before that, we have uh, more immediate plans for capital markets to support the recovery. Uh, this crisis means that many companies uh, will see their debt soar. To stay solvent, they will need to restore uh, sustainable debt to equity ratios. The obvious, uh, obvious way for them to do this is to raise equity capital on public markets. So we want to help companies affected by the economic shock to recapitalize by uh, uh, making specific changes uh, on the rules of prospectus. Uh, and we want to uh, remove some uncertainty burdens for investors by uh, taking changes in uh, markets and financial uh, instruments directive, MIFID II. And we are also assessing how to increase uh, research uh, coverage, especially for SMEs. Uh, they need a good uh, level of investment research to uh, give them enough visibility to attract new investors. Uh, finally, we're uh, also exploring uh, further options to promote simple, transparent and standardized securitization to free up new lending to the economic recovery. Uh, now, turning to the digital transition, uh, the pandemic has shown how much we depend on digital technology and networks to keep things running in the midst of uh, restrictions. Uh, this is true of uh, digital financial services as well. Uh, despite lockdowns, firms had been uh, able to continue providing uh, financial uh, services, even with staff working uh, remotely. Uh, capital markets have also kept uh, operating. Uh, uh, digitalization has been essential to guarantee business continuity. Uh, the digital transformation brings opportunities for consumers as well as for providers. Uh, consumers should gain better access to products uh, uh, better suited to their needs. Providers will be able to uh, uh, provide services more efficiently and with larger reach. So we intend to present strategy on uh, digital finance early, uh, uh, also in early uh, autumn, focusing on three areas. Uh, we will address uh, ways to deepen the uh, single market for uh, digital financial services. We will set out how to promote data-driven financial sector, and we will look on how EU rules in this area can stimulate inno innovation while remaining technology NATO. Uh, at the same time, we need to continue regulating and supervising risks appropriately. Strong regulation and supervision is uh, vital for maintaining trust in finance, whether for traditional or new players. This is why uh, our approach is to make sure that all activities and risks are properly uh, regulated and supervised. EU rules must be fully applied and enforced by supervisory authorities. Uh, when it comes to innovation, crypt uh, crypto assets and distributed ledger technologies will be our first test case. Here we will present a legislation on common approach that supports and stimulates innovation while ensuring adequate supervision of risks. This brings me to the digital operational resilience. As the financial sector and markets embrace digitalization, our financial system must be able to detect, address and recover from incidents such as cyber attacks. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, it may not uh, yet be business as usual. The crisis is not over yet. Uh, we are still going through uh, dealing with a short-term impact of the pandemic and devastating socio-economic uh, effects. For Europe's economic recovery, I see financial sector playing a major role. Yes, it will be uh, challenging, but it's also a time of opportunity to focus on resilient and inclusive recovery, consistent with long-term sustainability. Thank you. Thank you very much, Executive Vice President. Um, you, you explained the scale and the of the challenges very clearly, and the intervention uh, that the European Commission and Europe is is taking. You, you kindly said you might take um, a few questions, and I have a, a couple of questions, if I may. Um, one of them, it's picked up on the points that you, you've mentioned. Uh, there are many international firms, very investors uh, joining this conference. Um, and a particular interest might be, how do you strike the right balance between making Europe more resilient, more self-reliant, European uh, economy, but also uh, an issue you've talked about a lot, 
keeping European markets fully open to international investments to make Europe a, a great place for, for investment. Uh, well, uh, uh, indeed, uh, on uh, this, uh, uh, indeed, it's uh, uh, important from EU side that we uh, stay open, we stay uh, open for investment, we stay open for uh, international uh, trade. Uh, at the same time, uh, we also must not be uh, uh, naive. Uh, we need to uh, see that this openness is uh, uh, reciprocal because uh, often uh, there is a situation that uh, 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 there is access for EU markets to the third uh, uh, country uh, companies for investment, for uh, trade. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, it's uh, much more uh, uh, European companies are facing much more restrictions when they want to go and invest and operate in uh, third uh, uh, countries. So we uh, want to ensure that. Uh, 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 reciprocity. That's what uh, uh, was one of the uh, uh, aims of the trade review, which we launched, uh, European trade review, which we launched uh, uh, last uh, week to assess all those uh, challenges. Uh, also, the more uh, recent uh, crisis uh, showed us the importance of resilience of EU supply uh, chains. Uh, so we are working on this, on this concept, what we call open strategic uh, autonomy, and that we need also to see what kind of uh, 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 capacities um, uh, and facilities we need in the EU to be uh, resilient faced by uh, sudden, uh, 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 sudden shocks. Thank you. Um, be very interested to know what's your assessment about the the level and the quality of um, international cooperation, particularly amongst supervisors, governments, as the world is is recovering or starting to recover, uh, perhaps at different speeds. What does that mean for global coordination and cooperation on financial services policy? Uh, well, uh, uh, from EU side, uh, we think it's very important that we uh, continue global uh, cooperation and coordination in area of uh, financial services. After all, financial markets are global. So also uh, uh, supervision and regulation must have global uh, reach. Uh, um, so far, it has been uh, done uh, successfully through uh, different uh, fora, including through uh, Basel uh, Committee. Uh, we are uh, committed to uh, implement also all uh, important uh, elements of the conclusion of uh, Basel uh, III uh, at uh, EU level and doing uh, necessary uh, preparations right uh, now. There was also a crisis response by international agreement to uh, postpone the implementation of Basel III by one year. And when I was referring in my speech to banking package, among other things, we were implementing this uh, post, uh, postponement so that new uh, requirements does not come uh, into effect and does not per, uh, pose uh, uh, additional burden on the financial sector uh, right uh, in the middle of uh, crisis. So also in this area, uh, international cooperation was there. Uh, but also, I would say uh, what we had seen is that um, uh, we now are in quite a different um, situation where we were a decade ago. Uh, financial sector, uh, let's use the banking sector uh, as an example, it's much better uh, capitalized, has much bigger uh, liquidity buffers, and uh, currently it is uh, a part of the solution and not part of the uh, problem. So what we are concentrating now, as I also said in a speech, is how to ensure that uh, financing is actually flowing to the real economy, that banks continue to provide a credit to the economy uh, in this uh, difficult time to help also the companies and households to go uh, through this uh, period of uh, turbulence. Uh, and there are uh, many uh, good uh, initiatives in this regard. Thank you. I have one question that's come through um, from, from the audience, a question from Politico Europe, from Björk Smith, Smith Mayer, finance reporter. Um, question to you is, how, how do you respond um, to the European Investment Bank's reluctance to handle the Commission's solvency instrument in the recovery plan? 
Uh, well, uh, as regards uh, uh, solvency uh, instrument, indeed, uh, solvency instrument was uh, one of the new instruments which we proposed as part of our recovery uh, plan, uh, Next Generation EU. So the basic uh, idea is uh, to uh, uh, support uh, the uh, uh, companies' uh, uh, recapitalization uh, uh, in this uh, recovery phase. So in the immediate uh, 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 crisis context, we were uh, concentrating on ensuring that companies have uh, enough liquidity. Now we also need to look at uh, uh, solvency. We can do it through capital markets. That's why I was mentioning uh, those initiatives uh, we are putting forward right now to support uh, uh, the possibility to raise equity to improve debt to equity ratios, uh, but uh, also we want to ensure more level paying field because currently we have uh, the temporary state aid framework, which gives much more flexibility uh, to EU member states to provide state aid to their companies, but that is affecting level playing field because some countries are better positioned to provide the state aid than others. With the uh, solvency instrument, we aim to provide this support also to uh, companies and sectors which are probably not as well uh, uh, covered uh, by state aid in a number of uh, countries. Well, uh, currently, uh, this whole uh, package and exact modalities, exact uh, implementation is still under discussions with uh, uh, with uh, 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 European uh, co-legislators, with uh, 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 Council, with European Parliament. Uh, we are, uh, of course, also in discussions with uh, 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 in, uh, exact implementation modalities, also with uh, uh, European uh, Investment Bank. But I would say it's uh, 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 currently work in progress, and I am optimistic that we will be uh, able to reach positive conclusions, both uh, on solvency instrument itself and also in its uh, exact implementation uh, modalities. Thank you. And, and, a, and a final question, if I may, a question from Christopher Putigig, the Chief Officer of Supervision, the Malta Financial Services Authority. Um, how will future work on anti-money laundering, uh, counter-terrorist financing, institutional architecture in the EU ensure that the risks of fragmentation of supervision are properly addressed? Uh, well, uh, indeed, uh, as regards uh, anti-money uh, laundering, uh, this was uh, our uh, conclusion already when we presented a previous uh, anti-money laundering uh, action plan, uh, that uh, we have uh, you know, strict European rules, and right now uh, there's already uh, anti-money laundering, the fifth anti-money laundering directive, uh, but uh, supervision is uh, so far uh, purely uh, national uh, and uh, that uh, uh, leads to a situation when uh, the anti-money laundering enforcement has been uh, uneven across member states and uh, often uh, there were certain gaps in cross-border situations where it was not clear which country's uh, uh, supervisor is exactly on charge of uh, what. Uh, we already uh, prop uh, propose some uh, targeted changes uh, uh, in a context of review of European supervisory authorities to give them more uh, say on this. And uh, currently, uh, with our next uh, anti-money laundering action plan, uh, we are uh, exploring options how we can further move competences at EU level to European supervisory authorities or uh, possibly setting a new anti-money laundering body at uh, EU uh, level. So we put those uh, uh, two options to uh, consultation. Uh, also, to uh, reduce the supervisory fragmentation, we think it's um, helpful that we would move part of our anti-money laundering uh, directives into regulations, which then can be uh, 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 enforced and supervised more efficiently at uh, EU uh, level. Indeed, we need a, uh, uh, we we see a scope for more uh, EU level engagement and uh, uh, more EU level so to say, uh, supervision in the area of anti-money laundering. And that's what we are currently uh, 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 exploring in a framework of our uh, public uh, consultations, uh, preparing our next uh, uh, anti-money laundering uh, proposals. 
Well, thank you very much, Executive Vice President. Thank you for coming to, to join the conference this morning to share your perspectives. We look forward to, to working with you in the period ahead to deliver on that uh, those actions that you've outlined. Thank you again. Thank you.